Okay, so this is a table showing to us the uh, values of ends of H. So we have the type of cell with corresponding value of ends of H. So this one is a figure showing just the variation of the coefficients A sub B, uh, B sub B, A sub M, with A sub X, B sub X, and A sub M, and B sub M with respect to Z. So for this one, this is, uh, from this uh, figure, there, you're going to get the value for B sub X. You just need the value for capital Z, which is equal to small z all over T. And this uh, Z sub max, which is equivalent to. <laughs> and having those values, you can have your B sub X. Similarly, this one is also to get your A sub M, and this one is your B sub M. And for our R, that is equal to the square root of four, the fourth root of e sub p times i sub p all over small k, wherein our a prime and r prime are given in our figure. And you have to take note that capital Z is this of Z all over capital R, and this of max is L all over R. And so that you can get the value for a sub b sub x, a sub x, a sub m, and b sub m. So for this one, uh, this is a proposal from BESEC and to estimate the value of small k using this equation. E sub s, the modulus of elasticity of the soil, d is pile width or the diameter. E sub s is the Poisson's ratio for the soil. And um, for practical purposes, it can be written, k can be written in this form. And we have now the Broome solution for the ultimate lateral resistance of short pile in sand and in clay. This one is for the sand to uh, get the ultimate lateral resistance for short pile. This one is for the clay type soil. So we have here your illustration for the restrained pile. This is a restrained pile and this one is a free headed pile. Uh, this is subjected, both are subjected to lateral forces. So ultimately, ultimate load analysis by Broome's method. So for laterally loaded pile, uh, it was Broome who, Broome's developed a simplified solution based on assumption of a shear for a shear failure in soil, which has the case for short pile and bending of pile governed by the plastic yield resistance of the pile section, which is applicable to Long's pile. So Broome's solution for calculating the ultimate load resistance q sub u for short pile is given in our figure presented a similar solution for piles embedded in cohesive soil as shown in uh, figure 9.35b so we have to take note from figure 9.35a this one 9.35a uh, our case of p is equal to this uh, formula and our C sub U, which is our undrained cohesion, is approximately 0.75 or Qs of U, which is our unconfined compression strength over our factor of safety, and that is equivalent to 2. So, therefore, our undrained cohesion is simplified to 0.375 Qs of U. So, in figure 9.36, it shows the Broom's analysis for long pile. So, from that figure, our M sub Y is equal to S times F sub Y. So this one is the broom solution for ultimate lateral resistance of long pile. This one is for sun. This is for clay. So our S is our modulus, section modulus of the pile section. F sub Y is the yield stress of the pile material. So in solving a given problem for both cases, for, uh, for the short pile and the long pile uh, it should be uh, checked so the deflection of the pile head which is denoted by x sub z when z is equal to zero under working load conditions can be estimated from our figure 9.37 and our eta this one is expressed as the fifth root of n sub h all over e sub p times i sub p so this is the illustration or the figure showing to us room solution for estimating the deflection of pile head for the sand and for the clay. So uh, these are dimensionless length 
uh, eta times L with respect to dimensionless lateral deflection. So this is showing to us the free-headed pile and the restrained pile. So the range of ends of H for granular soil is given in table 9.16. So similarly, in figure 9.37b, which is for clay, the term capital K is the horizontal modulus and can be defined as pressure over displacement. And our beta can be expressed as the fourth root of K times D all over 4, E sub P times I sub P. So from figure 9.37, uh, our Q sub G, which is our working load. So this one is our table showing to us the unconfined compression strand Q sub U uh, with, uh, with corresponding value for our K. So we have here a sample problem. Consider a steel H pile having this section 25 meters long embedded fully in a granular soil. Assume that ends of H is equal to 12,000 kilonewton per cubic meter. The allowable displacement at the top of the pile is 8 mm. Determine the allowable lateral load, which is Q sub G, and we let M sub G is equal to zero. So we try to use the elastic solution. So for this one, from table 9.1a, uh, for an HP, for a steel H pile having this uh, cross section, our I sub P is 123 times 10 to the negative 6 m to the fourth about the strong axis. So therefore, our E sub P is equal to this value. And you can get the value for capital T, which is the square root, the fifth root of E sub P, I sub P over N of H. So therefore, we simply have to substitute the given values that gives us 1.16 meters. So if our L over T is equal to 21.55, this is greater than 5, so this is a long, this, the pile is a long one, so this is a pile, a uh, long pile, so our M sub G is equal to 0. And if we try to get our deflection, so X of Z, X of Z this is the equation, for our Q sub G, we are given with this formula, so we simply have uh, to Identify the values from table 9.15 having a z equal to 0, our x of z is 8 mm, and our a sub x is 2435. Uh, so we can substitute our uh, given values to this equation, so q sub g, which is equivalent to 53.59 kilonewton. So the magnitude of Q sub G is based on the limiting displacement condition only. However, the magnitude of Q sub G based on the moment capacity of the pile also need to be determined. So the moment capacity is equivalent to this equation. So according to a table 9.15, the maximum value of A sub M at any depth is 0.772. So the maximum allowable moment the pile can carry is equal to this equation. So if our F sub Y is equal to this value from table 9.1a, we can have this value for IP and this sub 1. So if we try to substitute this value to this equation, we can have our uh, value for this one, which is equal to, we have the ratio, uh, which is equal to 968.5 times 10 to the negatives of M cubed. So this expression is equal to this. So if we try to substitute that one to this, uh, our value now for Q sub G is equal to, substitute this one, we have the value for this which is equivalent to 268.2 kilonewton. So since our Q sub G is 268 kilonewton which is greater than 53.59 kilonewton, the deflection criteria apply, and we try to use our Q sub G, which is 53.59 kilonewton. So we try to adapt this value, which is 53.59 kilonewton. So we move on now to pile driving formulas. To develop the desired load carrying capacity, a point-bearing pile must penetrate the dense soil layer sufficiently 
or have sufficient contact with a layer of rock. So this requirement cannot always be satisfied by driving a path to a predetermined depth because soil profiles vary. For that reason, several equations have been developed to calculate the ultimate capacity of the pile during driving. So these dynamic equations are widely used in the field to determine whether a pile has reached a satisfactory bearing value at a predetermined depth. One of the earliest such, such equations commonly referred as the engineering use or EN record formula. So this is derived from the work energy theory, which is equal to uh, energy imparted by the hammer per blow is equal to pi resistance times the penetration per hammer blow. So according to EN, the engineering use formula, the pi resistance is the ultimate load Q sub U, which is expressed as less one. So our WR is weight of the ram, you have H, height of the fall of the ram, S is the penetration of pile per hammer blow, and C is constant. So the pile penetration S is usually based on the average value obtained from the last few driving blows. So in that equation original form, the following values of C were recommended. For drop hammers, our C is equal to this values. For steam hammers, C is equal to this values. So we just have to take note for the unit for its specific value for our C constant. So also a factor of safety, F, F, S is equal to 6, was it was recommended for estimating the allowable pile capacity. Note that for a single and double acting hammers, the term W sub R H can be replaced by E times H of E, where E is the efficiency of the hammer and H of E is the rated energy of the hammer. So therefore, our U sub U, which is our ultimate capacity, is equal to E times H of E all over S plus C. So we have here the table showing to us the pile uh, driving formulas. So we have different pile driving formulas based on the modified EN formula. We have the Danish formula and we have the Jumbos formula. So the maximum stress developed on a pile during a driving operation can be estimated from the pile driving formulas presented on table 9.17. So to illustrate our uh, modified EN formula, we have this equation. So in this equation, our S here is the average penetration per hammer blow, which can also be expressed as 1 all over N. Our S is in inches here, and N is the number of hammer blows per inch of penetration. So our Q now, Q sub U is equal to this equation if we try to substitute the value for our S to this equation. So from table 9.3b, for this pile, our A sub P is 100 inches squared. The weight of the pile is equal to this equation. Uh, is equal to this equation if we try to substitute the value. So we try to, actually for this, we try to uh, convert inches to feet. So after, then we multiply to the unit weight of the pile and the length of the pile that gives us 8.33 kilo, uh, 8.33 kips. And if the weight of the cup is 0.67 kip, then the weight of the cup would be 8.33, less one weight of the pile plus weight of the cup. So you have now a uh, weight of the pile, which is equivalent to 9 kip. And for the hammer, we let rated energy equal to 9.2 kip feet. This is our H of E, which is equal to W of R times H. And the weight of the, of the ram is equal to 5 kips. So if we try to assume the hammer efficiency, which is 0 0.85, and that N is 0.35, we try to substitute the values, our Q sub U is equal now to this equation. So we have here a table showing to us the values for N, Q sub U, A sub P, and Q sub U all over A sub P. So this one is a figure showing to us a uh, uh, plot of stress versus uh, the number of blows.